Hello everyone, it's Sandra and welcome to today's video. I wanted to just share some products that I've been into, things that have been making winter more bearable for me, some cozy winter favorites. Let's get started with things that smell really, really good. I dread the start of winter. I hate the short, dark days. There are weeks and weeks on end in which there is zero sunshine. I just get down in the dumps and one of the few things that gives me a little bit of delight is just kind of leaning into my little self-care routines and fragrance is a big part of that. I have six fragrances that I've just been loving to wear lately. This is something that I like to wear in the evenings mostly and it's Tom Ford Noir de Noir. This is a really deep and earthy rose scent. It's slightly sweet but it's not too cloying in my opinion. I just really, really love it and it smells so good on a cold winter evening. The top notes of this fragrance are saffron, middle notes are black rose truffle and uh, patchouli, and the base notes are vanilla oud and oak moss. I could eat this right up. Love this fragrance. It's one of my go-tos when, uh, when the nights get dark and cold. This kind of brings me a little bit of joy. Another Tom Ford fragrance that I love wearing in the evening when the weather gets colder is Lost Cherry. Now I can get away with this year round in the evening, but um, I, I like it even more when the weather is colder. And this is again, this is sweet, but it, I don't find it cloying. And this is something that really, really grew on me. When I first smelled this fragrance, I think the first two, three years that this fragrance was out, every time I smelled it, I didn't like it. But for some reason, I don't know what happened, over time it grew on me and then I ultimately decided to buy it because I fell in love with it. So this was very much like a slow burn for me. I love it, it's so delicious. Um, the top notes of this fragrance are bitter almond, black cherry, and cherry liqueur. Middle notes are sour cherry plum, Turkish rose. Base notes are tonka bean, vanilla, cinnamon, benzoin, sandalwood, cloves, cedar, patchouli, and vetiver. Next up is a fragrance that I just got refilled yesterday. One of my favorite things about Lilabo fragrances is that all their fragrances, if you buy them in the 50 or 100 milliliter bottles, they are refillable. And every time you get your bottle refilled, you save about 20%. This is Rose 31. It's been one of my favorite fragrances for the last decade. And it's a very refreshing, woody rose. It's, uh, it's not as sweet as uh, the rose notes in Tom Ford, Noir de Noir, or Lost Cherry. Uh, there's just something really crisp and refreshing about this. So the top notes are rose and cumin, the middle notes are vetiver and cedar, base notes are musk, guyac wood, um, olib olibanum, labdamum, and oud. So there is this beautiful refreshing depth in this fragrance from the woods. It's a really nice counterpoint to something so sweet and floral as a rose. And this is a fragrance that I can wear day or night. Very, very happy to have this back full back into my life. Next up is uh, a fragrance that I'm pretty sure is discontinued, but you can sometimes still find it on discounted fragrance websites and it's Burberry Body. And I just love the way this smells in fall and winter. This just brings me back so many fun memories. So it's a fragrance that I still love wearing today. The top notes are peach, wormwood, and freesia. Middle notes are rose, sandalwood, and iris. Base notes are musk, cashmere, wood, vanilla, and amber. There's just something really cozy about this fragrance. It's it's beautiful. This is a fragrance that, I don't know, I love the way this smells on knitwear. Next is Vanilla and Anise by Jo Malone. Now, I still, I had hoarded lots of bottles, lots of the mini bottles of this, and friends sent me theirs when this fragrance was discontinued. Um, they have since brought it back, but you can no longer buy it in the small bottles. You can only buy this fragrance in the full size, online only, and um, you have to go to the archive section of the website where they have a selection of their archive scents that are still available to order online only. But um, as far as I know, I don't think they have this at fragrance counters anymore. And this is just a really beautiful, refreshing, floral, spicy, woody vanilla. 
it is so, so delicious. And this is one of my most complimented fragrances. Whenever I wear this out, I get a ton of compliments on it, which is always really nice. The top notes are star anise, fennel, neroli, bergamot. Middle notes are frangipani, orchid, clove, tuberose, and jasmine. Base notes are vanilla, tonka bean, vetiver, and amber. Absolutely delicious. Um, a fragrance that I tend to wear most during the day, but it, it works well day or night. Last but not least, we have Tam Dao by Diptyque. This is one of my favorite favorite fragrances year round, but um, for some reason this summer, I haven't worn it as much as I did in previous summers. I've just been busting it out now that the weather has gotten colder. One of my daily go-tos, so I wanted to give it a shout out because if you like sandalwood, you should check this out because it's a beautiful, beautiful sandalwood fragrance. And this is for all my sandalwood lovers. And it layers really beautifully with sweeter floral scents as well if you just want to give them a kick of sandalwood and a kick of more of that woody depth. By the way, this is, I have the Eau de Toilette. They do make this in an Eau de Parfum, but I like the, the Eau de Toilette version. Top notes are Italian Cypress, Myrtle, and Rose. I really don't smell rose in this at all, but maybe that's just me. Um, to me, this is very much like a straight up woody sandalwood fragrance. Uh, the middle notes are sandalwood and cedar. Base notes are Brazilian rosewood, spices, amber, and white musk. Moving on to candles, I have three, starting with the most Christmassy. This is Christmas in a jar <laughs> candle of 2023. I'm pretty sure it's limited edition. They only sell this during winter, but it's from home court and uh, it's the balsam fireplace candle and it is so so beautiful it's it's just a nicely balanced candle it's not um it's not too smoky let me read you the official notes here the keynotes are nova scotian fir balsam resin siberian juniper berry eucalyptus leaf oil salted amber guatemalan cardamom and indian papyrus so it's just really nicely blended. And I really, really love home court candles. Now home court is like a fancy homeware company. They have uh, hand soap, they have dish soap, they have surface cleaner, they have candles. I think they have hand lotion maybe as well. And everything I've tried from them, I really, really loved. Their candles, specifically are beautiful, beautiful candles. They burn evenly, they burn really clean. I never have any issues with them tunneling or anything. The scent throw is really, really good. When I burn this in the entryway, I can smell this throughout the entire house and it just makes me really happy. It's not quite as strong as the throw of the Nest candles, like the Nest holiday candle or the hearth candle. Those are a bit more intense. I'd say the, the throw of these candles is slightly stronger than diptyque candles, for example. So I'm just such a big fan of them. They are expensive. They're a luxury product. They would make a beautiful gift as well. The vessels are really beautiful. All their products are great, but for me, candles are number one. Um, the dish soap is number two because I really love their steeped rose scent in the dish soap. It just makes me look forward to doing the dishes, which is kind of silly. I actually really like the matching hand soap that smells like this too, the balsam fireplace hand soap. I bought that too. And um, every time I'm, wash my, I'm washing my hands, I get a nice little whiff of, of Christmas. So that's always really cute. Candle number two is by the brand Lafco. Oh, this is delicious. This is Faux de Bois by Lafco. I love the vessels. They're really chic and modern. I like that there's no branding on them or anything. Um, this would make a really cute planter afterwards. You can put a little succulent in there. A beautiful cozy fireplace kind of scent, but it's not quite as burnt and smoky as the Diptyque Faux Bois candle. So um, I personally don't love the, the Diptyque Faux Bois candle. That one's just like a little bit too literal for me. That one literally smells like you're hanging out in, like next to a wood burning fireplace. This one has those elements. It's a little more sophisticated, dare I say. Let me look up the notes because I am, I'm not great at um, at identifying official notes. So this is fresh pine falls on curls of sandalwood and rare Virginia cedarwood, smoky leather accords, frankincense, and nuances of vanilla are tranquil and comforting. And tranquil and comforting are the perfect 
adjectives to describe this candle. There's like the hint of woodiness, a hint of, of smoke. You get that really luxurious elevated vibe from the sandalwood and the vanilla and the cedar wood. I usually start burning this in the evening and it just creates a really beautiful ambiance. The next candle is also by Lafco and this was the uh, limited edition collaboration that they did with Sir Candleman. I'm pretty sure you can still buy it online. I just got them from Amazon and uh, if you love scented candles and if you don't follow Sir Candleman either on TikTok or Instagram, I highly suggest you do. He he just makes exploring the world of home fragrance so much fun. I love the way that he describes fragrance. He collaborated with Lafco on this candle. It's called Heart of the Matter and it is so, so luxurious, so cozy. This is um, a bit sweeter. This is like vanilla amber. There's cumin and, and pepper as well. So it's not, it's really nicely balanced so that it's not too cloying. A lot of the times vanilla and amber can be a bit too cloying for me, but if it's balanced with the right notes, I, I think it can smell amazing. It actually smells even more amazing when it's lit. Like it's nice when it's, when I'm just smelling it like this, but once I light it and it starts scent, and the scent starts to fill the room, it smells even more amazing. So the top notes are plum, pepper, cumin. Middle notes are labdanum, labdanum, amber, and Tahitian vanilla. Base notes are patchouli, moss, and guyac wood. The sweetness and coziness of the vanilla and amber are beautifully balanced by those, by the woody notes. And then you've got like the pepper and the cumin at the top. That wraps up our fragrance segment, let's dive into some skincare next. For skincare this season, the name of the game has been hydration, light layers of hydration because my skin gets really dehydrated, but it's still also quite oily in the T-zone. So it's all about finding that balance. Both of these products have been such incredible, amazing finds for me. I, I love them and uh, I haven't had to switch over to a heavier duty moisturizer yet. This is the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Hyaluronic Toner First Essence for Sensitive Skin. I discovered this product on TikTok. I don't remember who I came across, but they said that they're acne prone and dehydrated and that they like this toner. So I was like, oh, it's worth a try. I absolutely love this. This is such a gorgeous essence. Highly recommend checking it out. Definitely make sure that you're ordering the right one because there is there are two versions of this. This is the the one for sensitive skin. It's uh, alcohol and fragrance free. So this is just a really, no frills essence. I just love splashing this on my face. Sometimes I do multiple layers of this depending on how dehydrated my skin is. So I wash my face while my face is still damp. I splash on some more essence on my face and maybe I repeat it once or twice depending on the levels of dehydration. And then for moisturizer, this is the Dew Air Angel Hydrating Gel Cream. I bought this right when it came out. I think I bought it in maybe in September. It's still going strong. I use this every single day, morning and night. The packaging is deceivingly small. Probably my favorite moisturizer. I think this has taken this, the top spot. I just love everything about it. If you are more dry, um, you're probably not going to like this. This is probably not going to be enough for you, but if you're like combination oily slash oily, definitely check this out. It's a really beautiful, lightweight gel cream. Both of these products um, are fragrance free. They don't smell like anything. They're not irritating at all. And this just has the most beautiful cushiony texture and it just instantly plumps the skin. I find that when I apply this on damp skin, it kind of boosts the effects of the plumping and the hydration. I, I notice even better results. So if you have this and you usually apply it when, once your skin is dry, um, I would recommend applying it when you're, while, while your skin is still damp from any serums or whatever, or you can just do a little mist with a hydrating mist and then apply the moisturizer on top. And I just found that just having these thin layers of hydration have made such a difference. Winter hasn't like fully, fully kicked in yet. I'm sure that when the, the polar vortex shows up in the January and it's like minus 20 outside, I'm going to need a thicker moisturizer. That's usually when I switch over to SkinCeuticals, Triple Lipid Restore. That's my other 
favorite holy grail moisturizer for now so far so good just having light layers of hydration with this essence and then um, this dew moisturizer have been doing the trick for me and then another thing i've been trying to be really really diligent with is that hand and foot care every single day every single night i've been um i've been making sure that i keep my hands and my feet well hydrated i've been loving this this is the cerave therapeutic hand cream it's very much like a no frills hand cream um, it just does the job. It doesn't smell like anything. It just instantly hydrates my hands and it's non-greasy. I hate greasy, heavy hand creams. This just sinks right in and it makes my hands so, so soft. I apply this, you know, multiple times throughout the day. I apply this, definitely I apply this before um, I go to bed at night. And then sometimes I add like a little cuticle oil to soften my cuticles. Sometimes I put this moisturizer on, even though it's a hand cream, I put this on my feet as well. And then for an ultra intensive foot treatment in the evening, I have been using this. This I bought, I bought this because of Becca's son. She, she mentioned this a long time ago and it's always been on my mind to get. On Amazon for Cyber Monday, they had this deal on a kit with this and a pair of these like gel ankle socks. So this is an ointment. It's the Carousel Intensive Foot Repair. This is a, an ointment. It, it just feels like Aquaphor in terms of, of the texture. And this contains salicylic acid and urea. I just apply this all over my feet and then I put on the those socks. So the socks are, um, think of socks with the toes cut off. That's, the, that's what this looks like. And the part that, um, covers your heel has like a little gel layer in there that just kind of seals in this ointment and it's like having a pedicure overnight like you wake up with feet that are just super super hydrated moisturized and um, it kind of takes care of any dead skin so this has been really really great I've been really happy with my diligent hand and foot care routine. In terms of makeup, I've talked a lot about some of my favorite makeup products in the uh, November everyday makeup routine video that I posted. So uh, if you haven't watched that yet, definitely recommend checking it out because I still love those products and that's one of my go-to routines. I've been into matte eyeshadows especially from from these two palettes. This is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. This is probably my my favorite big eyeshadow palette that I own, but I haven't been really touching the glitters that much lately. Um, I've been really into the matte shades. So these three shades and then these two shades specifically, I've been using them so often and I just mix them. I mix them up. I dip my, my, dip my brush in multiple shades and I just kind of make up my own little concoction and that's what I've been using just to kind of frame the eye a little bit. My beloved Tom Ford Coco Mirage. Unfortunately, this palette is discontinued, but I have it. I want to use it. I've been wearing this a lot too. Uh, this is what I'm wearing today. But again, I've just been using it very, very lightly. I've been using these matte shades just to frame. So I'm not actually applying this all over the lid. I just kind of apply it on like a little bit above above my crease just to, to frame my eyes that I apply a little bit on my lower lash line as well and then I've been really into keeping my actual eyelids more light and a little bit of you know a little bit of light reflection so Chanel undertone has been a go-to that's what I'm wearing right now um, just just all over the lid for a little bit of so soft and subtle light reflection. It's not too warm, it's not too yellow. So it's just a really beautiful neutral. For cheeks, I've shared a couple of my go-to cheek colors in some YouTube shorts that I filmed recently. The first is if I want a more luminous cheek, especially in the evening, this looks really good. I've been doing the CL Liquid Blush in the shade Kirsty. This is just a really pretty warm nude pink blush. And then I top it off with uh, Peau de Peche by Westman Atelier. This is a really beautiful peachy cream highlighter, good blush topper slash highlighter. It just gives that really like a soft gleam, but um, it's not like, it's not too blinding. I don't love a blinding highlight on me. It's not uncomfortable to, it's not uncomfortable to wear. It sets nicely and it wears really beautifully on my skin. And I think it looks especially beautiful in the evenings. During the day, if I want a luminous cheek, I've just been doing Merit Fox. 
This is the blush that I'm wearing right now. This blush isn't the most long wearing blush formula, but I just love this color so much. It's my go-to lazy blush because when I put this on my cheeks, I don't need to do bronzer. I don't need to do highlighter either because it has enough luminosity by itself because of this like balmy dewy formula and the color is just really really great it's a great all-in-one cheek enhancing color for me so i'm still reaching for this on a regular basis and then for a matte cheek option i've been on a roll with uh, laura mercier chai i've had this blush for years i've even considered decluttering it several times just because i wasn't reaching for it but then anytime i would put it on i would be i would really like it so I just had to wait for a moment in time in which I was kind of craving a matte cheek. And um, I've been doing this thing where if my eyes are luminous and my cheeks are luminous, I do matte lips. But if I have um, glossy lips and uh, like a lot, little shimmer on my eye, then I want to do a matte cheek. So when I wanna do a matte cheek, Laura Mercier Chai has been my go-to blush. And I have to say thanks to Kate from State of Kate because she recently bought this blush and she's been loving it and wearing it a ton. And seeing her wear it inspired me to shop my stash, pull it out and wear it more and really kind of rekindle my love and appreciation for this blush. So I always love to be inspired to use what I actually have. So uh, thanks to Kate for that. A reminder to you too, maybe to shop, shop your stash, see what hidden gems you can rediscover um, before rushing to buy something new. So Laura Mercier Chai has been such a great one. And if you watched the last YouTube short that I did, this is the blush that I'm wearing. I paired it with a matte bronzer and it's just, it's great. It's, it's like, again, it's like a nude pink, right? Like a nude pink with a little bit of warmth to it. It's a nude peachy pink, dusty peachy pink. All the things that I like. Another thing I've been into is uh, this eyeliner from Victoria Beckham. This is the Victoria Beckham Satin Eye Cajal, just in the cocoa color. It's just this really simple matte dark brown. Absolutely love it. It's so creamy and it's so easy to use. It's easy to smoke out. The longevity is amazing. So I've been kind of getting into eyeliner again and this has just been a joy to use. I don't do too much of it. I just have a tiny little bit of this through my top lash line just to thicken my, my lashes a little bit, but it's such a good color. I love a good dark brown liner and it smokes out really beautifully and I love the fact that it's not too warm. I've been filling out my brows with the Baby Blade from Victoria Beckham Beauty. I bought the shade Dark Brown, which matches my brows really well. I do have naturally very dark brown eyebrow hairs and this is just, maybe like a shade lighter than my natural brow hairs, which is, is really nice because it's still, it fills them in, it looks natural, but it's not quite as harsh. I find this formula very long wearing in my brows as well. And uh, for brow gel, just to set everything in place, I've been loving the Fluff Up Brow Wax from Benefit. This is just a clear brow gel and it just gives me the perfect amount of hold and makes my eyebrows look a little bit more fluffy, a little bit more voluminous. It doesn't slick them down. It's not like, it's not, it doesn't laminate them or anything. It doesn't have that super shiny, slick back, laminated look. It's just more of that soft, fluffy hold, which I really, really like. Last shout out is for the lips. This is another thing that I, I've been shopping my stash for. I just I was just looking at, at my lipsticks and I was like, oh, what's something that I really like that I haven't reached for in a while? I've kind of rediscovered this NARS, the um, Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm in the shade Brief Encounter. And this is what I'm wearing today. I love this formula. I just, I just kind of forgot about it, to be honest. So I'm really happy that I pulled this back out and I've been enjoying this. It's a beautiful color. It's really comfortable. It's matte, but um, it's not drying at all. It's a, it's like a, legitimately feels like a lip balm, but it has a matte finish. It's not as um, heavy as a matte lipstick. It just feels a bit more airy, a bit more light and really, really comfortable. And the last things I wanted to talk about are brushes. The Rose Ink Number no. 3 brush, it just applies foundation so beautifully. And it also applies cream bronzer, cream blush, cream highlight, beautifully as well. So if I'm in a rush and if I don't feel like switching on my brushes, I use this for everything. I use this for blending in my foundation. Then I take the same brush and I use it to blend out 
any cream bronzer or cream contour that I'm using. I can apply it to use my cream blush. It's beautiful with the Merit blush, beautiful with the uh, CL blush. It's like an all-in-one. It does my foundation and all my cream cheek products. I get it all taken care of with one brush. It, it's got like a little bit of give to it, so it just makes it really flexible and really, really versatile. So this has been my go-to, especially on days in which I am in a rush. I love the Refer eyeshadow brushes so much. Having small brushes for my eye shape has made such a difference. It's just been allowing me to be more precise and to play more with, with shadows and stuff like that. And these two brushes have been on heavy rotation, especially now that I've been more into matte, um, using matte eyeshadows to kind of carve out my eye. This is the Refer 14 brush. This is what I like to use just on my on my upper upper brow bone kind of just to add some dimension there. And then um, this is the 14 mini brush, which is like the little baby sister of the 14 brush. This is what I've been using to smoke out my lower lash line. This is so soft and fluffy. It's perfect for just adding that soft dimension without it being really harsh. And I've been using this to do that. Or if I want to add just a little bit of extra depth, extra darkness, just just in the outer corner over there, it's just been beautiful for that. The last thing I want to talk about is my sweater because this is another cozy favorite that has been bringing me a lot of joy this winter. This is by the brand Me and M. It's a brand that I've, I've always been curious about. I've always wanted to check it out because a lot of uh, British influencers that I follow talk about Me and M and everything always looks so good. They are now shipping in the United States, so that's really great. Bad news for my wallet, and this is just a really cool sweater. It's this really beautiful eggplant color. I love this color. Um, it's, um, it's not too long, but it's not cropped either. I don't have to tuck it in or anything. Like today I'm just wearing it more casual with a, um, like a white t-shirt underneath, but I love how cozy it is. I love the little details. It's got little cutout details at the side. It's got these cutout details at the sleeves. They also make this in a really beautiful gray color as well. It was expensive. It's not It's not a cheap sweater by any means. This is definitely more of a luxury price point, but it's, um, it's cashmere and wool blend. It's so luxurious and thick and soft and cozy. I absolutely love this. And um, I, I will never regret investing in high quality knitwear because I I'm, I'm wearing knitwear six months out of the year. I'm always cold. To me, this is really, really worth it. The best part though about this sweater is, drum roll please, it has a detachable turtleneck. So has buttons here and hidden buttonholes on the inside here. You can do this and then obviously secure it all the way around with buttons and it's converted into a turtleneck. I love this so much. So it's basically, you know, it's an expensive sweater, but you're getting two sweaters in one. You know, that's the girl mathing that I did in my brain to justify this. I also like wearing this with the turtleneck part on, but not secured with buttons and just worn a little bit off center so that there is like a little sliver of skin showing. I find it really interesting and like a really nice little date night look where you're still cozy, you're still warm, you have a turtleneck, but you know, you have a little sliver of skin showing as you're moving. Um, this is what I wore out to dinner the other night with just a pair of leather pants and a pair of pumps and I just felt so cozy so comfortable but really really chic and put together as well so I wanted to uh, to throw this in there because it's been such a favorite and that's it my friends those have been all the uh, the cozy favorites that I've been into lately let me know what you've been loving in the comments below and uh, I hope you're having a really really beautiful week Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.